This is an Express LRS receiver. And normally, if I wanted to put some firmware on this receiver, I would flash it using the easiest and fastest way to a flash Express LRS, which is to put the receiver into Wi-Fi mode, contact it with a web browser, and upload the firmware over the web browser. In fact, I made a video titled The Easiest and Fastest Way to Flash Express LRS, and I showed exactly how to do that. That video is linked down below if you missed it. But sometimes that doesn't work. And specifically, I'm talking about a scenario where you have bricked your receiver. Like literally your receiver doesn't work. Your receiver is not going into Wi-Fi mode or for some reason, the normal ways that you would flash a receiver simply aren't working. Today, I'm gonna show you the way to just like hit the receiver over the freaking head with a mallet and knock it back to its senses. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. You've probably encountered the situation where you've got a Betaflight flight controller and for whatever reason, you can't get it to flash, you can't get it to connect to Betaflight and you put it into bootloader mode and that allows you to flash it. Bootloader mode is that ultimate fallback. I'm gonna just hit this piece of electronics over the head with a mallet and knock it back to its senses. And it probably won't surprise you to learn that Express Alerts receivers also have bootloader mode. But bootloader mode requires you to take some additional steps in order to get the firmware onto the device. In order to flash in bootloader mode, you need a programming adapter. Now, one type of programming adapter is your Betaflight flight controller. Betaflight pass-through means that Betaflight tells Express LRS Configurator, I'm a programming adapter. Express LRS Configurator sends the firmware to Betaflight and Betaflight passes it through to the receiver, which is in bootloader mode and is waiting to be flashed. And in some ways, Betaflight pass-through is like the easiest way because like you don't have to desolder your receiver. It can just be in your quadcopter. You just plug in your flight controller like normal, Betaflight pass-through, flash the receiver, good to go. But the problem is there's all kinds of little ways in which Betaflight pass-through doesn't work. Like I think you have to have telemetry turned off and you have to, and you have to be using Crossfire and there's all these it just basically, a lot of the time, it just doesn't work. And it's really frustrating. And I'm just like, eh, I don't do beta flight pass through. It's too much of a pain in the ass. I want something that's going to work reliably. That's what we're looking at today. Because the other way to flash an Express LRS receiver is with a hardware programming adapter. And this tool right here, that's what that is. This is the Radio Master Express LRS programming board. And I want to point out that this is not a unique piece of hardware. There are generic uh, serial programming adapters. They go by the name CP210 or FTDI are two common acronyms that you see associated with them. And if you already own a CP210 or an FTDI adapter, you can totally do what I'm about to show you using that. But it's a little bit of a hassle. Like for example, the Radio Master program adapter comes with this little pin header. And these are actually what's called pogo pins. Check it out, they're spring-loaded. And that means it's really easy to kind of press them up against the uh, pads on the receiver and flash the receiver while holding them in place. I've flashed using a generic FTDI adapter before, and it's always a little bit of a hassle, like you have to solder wires or get your alligator clips out. This is so much easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this programming adapter and show you how to recover a bricked Express LRS receiver using it. And the first thing we'll do is start up Express LRS receiver. We'll choose a firmware version and we will choose the correct uh, target for, this is the BR3 Diversity 900 megahertz RX. We'll choose the correct target name. Uh, unlike the web interface, where you can log into the web interface and look at the target name that is currently on the receiver. In this case, we just have to know. And if we don't know, we just have to guess. But the good news is if we guess wrong and brick our receiver, we'll be able to get it back. So that's nice. Next, I'll scroll to the bottom of the screen and I need to choose a serial device. And what I should see is that there is a COM port that appears when I plug in the adapter. So here we've got COM15. And if I unplug this adapter, well, COM15 goes away. That's the COM port that this adapter is on. Now, if you plug in and you don't see a COM port, you may need to download the drivers for this device. They're available from the Radio Master product page, USB to UART driver, that's the driver you need. I'll put a link to this page in the video description. And uh, that's also, by the way, where you would buy this if you decide to buy this programming adapter. So I'll select the COM port. 
And then the next thing I need to do is put the receiver into bootloader mode. And the way that I do that is by holding down the bootloader button on the receiver. Uh, that looks like a bind button, but uh, as of today, it is not a bind button. It is a bootloader button. Interestingly, in ExpressLRS 3.4, which has just come out and release candidate, they finally, after all these years, added the ability to bind using the bind button. Ooh, ExpressLRS, heaven's Betsy. Before we go on, I also wanna point out that some receivers don't have a bind button, like this happy model receiver here, there's no button on it. Uh, what you'll need to do if you have a receiver like that is you will need to bridge these two tiny pads here next to the ground pad. By bridging these two pads, either with a solder bridge or you just take the tip of a metal object and you just short across them and hold it down, that is the equivalent of holding down the bind button on a receiver. I always end up just solder bridging them because I think consistently holding them while you're trying to do all this nonsense is pretty tricky. But my receiver has a bind button, so I will hold down that bind button and then let's just make sure I've got the wires aligned the right way. Here is ground and here is ground is next to the bind button. And if I just come in and hold the bind button down and press in here, I should get this guy to power up. Oh, had it for a minute, there we go, there we go. Now, what I wanna see is I wanna see a solid red LED. That means the receiver is in bootloader mode. If I don't see a solid red LED, then I haven't done this correctly and I, th what I'm about to try will not work. What I'm about to try is to hit the flash button. And here we go, trying to initialize. Oh, I screwed up, I screwed up, I'm sorry. I had it set to pass through. Do you see it's trying to flash in pass through mode? That's not correct. I need to, yes, here where it says flashing method, I need to pick UART. My mistake, I'm gonna leave that in the video just so you know I'm human. And flash, here we go, serial port COM15, connecting. It's not connecting, why is it not connecting? I'm gonna guess I'm not making good contact with one of these pins, let me try again. There we go, that's what we wanna see. Now just don't move your freaking hand. And, 100%, yay, it's done, success, we flashed it. Like everything with ExpressLRS, there are pros and cons to this method. The major pro of this method is that if you've bricked your receiver, you got nothing to lose. The damn thing isn't coming back. This is the way to get it back. You can try flashing it using serial pass-through if you feel like it, or you can take it out of your quad, you can desolder it. And by the way, this won't work if it's soldered into the quad because both the flight controller and the receiver are sort of connected and the flashing adapter won't know who to talk to and it just won't work right. So you can desolder it, take it out of the quad and recover it using this, or you can just desolder it and throw it out. It's your choice. Um, the place where this might be super useful during day-to-day -day operation is if you are building a lot of quadcopters and you wanna just flash all the Express LRS receivers very quickly, this is way quicker than doing it via the web interface uh, once they're soldered into the quad. So that might be another case where this programming adapter would be useful. And thanks to the Express LRS bind phrase, after flashing it, they will also all be immediately bound to uh, whatever binding phrase you plan to use with them. So that's nice. You won't have to go through a separate binding process. Either way, like most things Express LRS, if this is useful for you, it's great that it's here. And if it's not useful for you, well then I don't know why you watch this video all the way to the end anyway. Every time I make an Express LRS video, some people in the comments are so annoyed. Like, oh, another video about how to do something with Express LRS. Yes, well, I guess it's good to have options. If you're interested in picking up this programming adapter, I've got a link down below to where you can pick it up. If you already have a CP210 or an FTDI adapter, you don't have to spend 10 bucks on this. In fact, you could theoretically just buy a set of pogo pins, but like just like this right here, this little adapter with the pogo pins, that's really what I'm buying this for. I already have CP210 adapters and they're a huge pain in the ass to use and this is so, so much easier. So I just went ahead and bought, I bought this. They didn't send me this for free. I went ahead and bought it and uh, maybe you'll feel the same way. That's it. If you're interested in learning about the fastest and easiest way to update Express LRS, I'll put a card on screen to that. If you're doing it any other way, I think you, well, obviously if you like what you're doing, stick with it. But I think that this is the way that I prefer to do it. Let's just put it that way. Um, also, would you like to learn about some more obscure features of Express LRS, like model match? What, Express LRS gets more complicated? Oh yeah, buddy. So let's learn about that. I'll put cards on screen and you can check them out. See you there.